If you want to get paid to post on Instagram, stop trying to grow your followers. Now, I know that that probably sounds crazy to you, but hear me out because here is the truth. Having a small following is amazing for landing brand deals. Well, how do I know that? Well, I've seen it firsthand. It happened in my own business and my own journey. And I've been able to help over 4,000 other people just like you do this with a small following. That's what I teach every single month. And I have been able to help people make thousands of dollars a month by pitching themselves to post on Instagram. And that's why I want to share this strategy, this idea with you, because I think it's going to help you get paid a lot faster and a lot easier. It is actually easier to land a brand deal when you have a smaller following because companies, these brands, they don't have to pay a massive amount of money to you for just one collaboration. In fact, most people make the mistake of thinking that they need a large following in order to land brand deals. And maybe you've thought that too, and maybe it's actually kept you from not doing it. People just wait around and wait around and wait around for that magical day for them to have this large follower number, whatever that number is that they're telling themselves that they need to have. The downside to this and the mistake here is that they never get started. They never actually learn how to do it the right way when they have a smaller following and then they lose out on so much money in the process of growing. So I want you to hear it from me and I want this to get ingrained in your head. You do not need to have some massive follower number to land brand deals at all. But the key And this is important. And this is where the the knowing the right method of how to pitch comes in place. The key here is that you have to know when to send brand your pitch, where to send it, right? Whether that's through an email, DMs, Twitter, LinkedIn, you have to make sure that you're pitching brands every day with your idea so you can land those brand deals. It really is just a numbers game. It's volume. So obviously the more that you pitch, the more deals that you're going to land versus not pitching at all and not landing any deals, right? You can't land a deal unless you pitch it and land it. So the only way to land a deal is to start pitching and pitching a lot. The following that you have today is more than enough. So you just have to start pitching now. You don't ever learn the right way to connect with brands if you don't connect with them. And by never trying, it's actually keeping you from being able to do the work to learn how to do it the right way and to actually work and get paid to post on Instagram. So if you've ever experienced this internal challenge where you're actually keeping yourself stuck and holding yourself back, you're not alone. This happens all the time. This is why my program Pitch It Perfect exists because this is what I help people do every single day. And here is something that I want you, and it's, this is like a perspective shift for you that I want you to understand because if you're someone that's like, I don't know how to pitch or I can't pitch or I haven't learned or I don't think I'm ready or I don't know what to say. I want you to realize that right now in your life, in your day-to-day, in your work, the truth is that you are pitching all the time, whether you realize it or not. Therefore, there's no reason to be afraid of it. If this is true, that we're always pitching and we want to start doing it to make money, then we should probably make sure that we're doing it the right way. Because the sooner that you learn how to pitch the right way, the better that you get at landing brand deals and the faster that you make money by posting on Instagram or Facebook or your blog. It's really that simple. We're all pitching all the time. The reason I learned about Pitch It Perfect was because of another curly hair creator, uh, Frizz and Frills, Chloe, who's amazing. And um, I can't remember if she had posted about it or if I had talked to her personally about it, but she told me, she was like, it was so helpful. I highly recommend it. So I, I took my like $500 that I had just gotten from like my two brand deals that I had done. And I was like, all right, I'm going to reinvest this and it's going to be awesome. and I'm going to do it. It helped so much because I really didn't even think about being able to like how to find the right contacts and what to talk to them about, how to get more than just, cause it, I do, I do hair stuff on my page. Pretty much that's all I do is just hair content. So a lot of people are like, let me send you, I'm sending you $500 worth of hair products. And I'm like, that's awesome. But <laughs> it's been really helpful for me just to learn like what to ask for, what to look for when working with people 
and and just all of that there's like for every no there's like a yes out there too and understanding that it's like you know it is really hard not to take it personally but sometimes it really is just like somebody had like something that worked out better or maybe somebody else reached out to them first or all these things and there's always like a future you know companies are always running ads they want a lot of people talking about their stuff so just because they said no to you this time doesn't mean they're gonna say no to you every single time so keep up your relationship with people and then ask even if they're gonna say no like ask because you never know maybe they will say yes even like for me with Curl Smith, I told them, I was like, hey, I saw that you guys use people's pictures in Ulta. And I think that's really cool. I would love to do that one day. That's something that I would aspire mm. to do. This was something I learned in Pitch It Perfect, researching about who you're pitching to. That's been so helpful. But then also just the biggest help for me and the cause for my consistent relationships with companies is having a personal relationship with the people you're emailing. I remember you saying that in Pitch It Perfect too, is like, they're a person when you talk to them. And it's funny because Curl Smith has had like three different girls that I've talked to, like, cause they keep getting promoted. And then there's the new person that's in charge of all of the influencer stuff. And I've been able to build relationships with all three of those girls. That's important is just, you know, be personable with who you're talking to. And especially when the person changes, make sure you talk to them more because they're new. So they're not going to think about you as much. So that's my biggest thing is like, talk to them, catch up with them be personal because it is like a personal business. Yeah. You're an influencer. People are listening to you because they like you. And so, you know, with the brands that you work with, keep it pers like personal, but professional at the same time. Well, this is just the best way to do it. One piece of it is that lately I have had so many yeses that were previously not yet. So I've had so many relationships that like in the past, the brand told me, no, we don't have a budget for that or no, reach out to us in 2022. And now like, this is one of those brands. They told me not right now. And when I circle back, now it's this amazing paid deal. So I felt like that was really encouraging. And just to know that if you're getting a lot of no's or a lot of not yet, like keep up with that relationship. Like people remember when you circle back with them, like, oh yeah, that's Beth Ann. She reached out to us in June and then in August and then, and then now in 2022. So that was one piece of it. So I'd had a previous relationship with them. And then this was me circling back to say like, oh, hey, like I, you said to reach out to you in 2022, like would love to, you know, see what you guys need. And I just really honestly follow Pip in terms of like the templates and the framework of checking in with them, trying to find out what their needs are. I've had a lot of success lately with something you mentioned on one of the calls of just saying, I have a couple ideas. Could I share them with you? And I feel like oftentimes the brands are like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, what are you thinking? And so with them, I laid out like, well, here are four different post and real ideas that I'd love to do for you. And they ended up being like, great. We'd love for you to do all of them. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was just really cool. And then the other piece of it that I think is worth mentioning too, is that one of their competitors had offered me a super crummy deal about a month ago and I didn't take it. And again, I just was kind of honoring like what I learned in PIP of like, this is so much work for so little in return. Like this isn't worth it. And it's okay to walk away and just know that something better is coming. And I'm so glad that I passed on that because if I was doing all this work for them, for this competitor, I wouldn't have gotten the brand with this deal with this brand now that's paying so well. And I feel like really respects my work and values what I'm doing for them. So just lots of great learning lessons in all of it. What are your thoughts on balancing pitching with starting to create something of your own? Because I'm sort of in this place where I like have some good money coming in. Like, again, I like live by like the teachings of like, it's all about the numbers. Like if I pitch 30 brands a week, like I'm going to get paid deals like it, and it, it'll happen. So I have some of that coming in. And now I feel kind of like when I think about trying to create stuff of my own and putting time into that, it's like, oh man, but I can, I know that if I like pitch and do paid deals, the money will come. And I don't know if I'm kind of using that as like an excuse to hold myself back from creating something of my own or more of my own. 
Yeah, I love this question because this is like, this is the next, this is like influencer academy stuff, which is really amazing. I think first is just the awareness that you're having the idea. So like it's already within you and it's already percolating. It's like here may not be tan tangible yet. What you said about the numbers, I think makes sense. And part of it's about getting started. And I think that first step is really the brainstorming of like, what would my own products or services or offer look like? What do I want to create? What do people typically come to me for? Who is my avatar for this? Like, who's the ideal customer for this? Um, and then really the most important question is what problem will this solve for them? What is the result that I am promising? And it doesn't matter if you're creating, you know, essential oils <laughs> or a course, they all solve a problem. And so getting to the root of that and remembering that a lot of times people are like, well, you know, the problem is people want to feel more calm. Well, calm's not a problem. So what's the problem? So it's about thinking about the problem instead of, you know, the, the kind of the, the end result that they get is great, but what is the problem that you solve? Cause that's going to, that's going to tap into the emotional psychology of why people buy. So that's a whole other like can of worms, but it is a stepping stone to the next steps. I mean, I always love it when a content creator starts pitching and loves it and then starts to get these little, these little like glimmers of like, Hmm, maybe I want to create something of my own. And that's really where the Academy comes in. So that's the first place that I would, I would start with just some of that brainstorming stuff. I, I think when I think about it, the most frustrating aspect of what I have been doing is that I have been producing content for over six years on my blog and my YouTube and my Instagram. And it just feels like it's stuck, like it's not growing. And to a person like, a, you know, recovering perfectionist like me, I keep on thinking like, ah, I have done my very best. And this thing is just not growing as much as I thought that I would with the, the effort that I've put behind it. So I think that's where I'm, and I'm feeling like, because I'm not, I don't have better numbers. I have no business asking somebody to pay me to make content. Well, and that's the thing. And if you keep thinking of it that way, that's all you're going to keep getting because you're focusing on that. And so that's, that's basically what you're telling the world that you, you want more of. I want more of thinking I'm stuck. I want more of non-growth. I want more of not money. So thoughts and your focus less on I'm not growing and more on how can I start monetizing more and how can I start going to these relationships that I've spent years building and cultivating and turning those relationships into monetizable opportunities Yeah, and focus on answering that question instead of I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. I can't grow. I can't grow because that's also relative to, yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, what was the expectation? So it's, it's just shifting because that's also going to put you in a receiving mode. It's kind of like, I want you to make two columns of like everything that you need to do and then pick one of those things. And then everything else that's left on the list, I want you to take it. And I want you to put it on the other column. And that column's called, this is what God's going to figure out for me. And you just focus on that one thing, because the more that we can give it over, it's like, I don't know what's best, but I'm just going to give this over. I'm going to stay open. I'm going to receive, I'm going to stay mindful. I will take the next indicated actions on the things that I need to do, but I'm not going to focus on the worry about all of this, because all that's going to give me is more of that. Yeah. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to give it over to the rest, God, Buddha, Jesus, the universe, whatever that is for you, higher power. And then it's going to be revealed to me. And then I don't have to do anything because yeah. I'm just receiving. At yeah. that point. And then I can take the next indicated action. So that is my idea for you. All right. My win is that I realize that I really like what I'm doing. Like, I'm not just doing it just to do it. Like, I really genuinely enjoy yes. what I'm doing. I like what I do so much that I don't know what happened. Like, I went from last week being like, okay, what content am I going to do? And I try to plan things out to, you know, make be paid for my abilities and my content to, oh, I'm willing to take any opportunity that comes my way. So now I have, you have no idea. I have like six brands on my desk of content that I agreed I don't know why I agreed to do these things and it's not paying me well enough. I don't know if it's because I'm doing it through like these third party websites and stuff. And although I'm like happy to get the free product and I'm getting like a little bit of something, for some reason I have this thing in my brain that I have to hop on any opportunity because it can move. There's a lot of amazing abundance around me, but I'm mad at the abundance because I'm not getting paid what I want. Like what this is showing you is that there, there is always going to be an abundance of opportunity. We will never in our lifetime be able to do 
as much as we would want to do because it's just it's constant new creation coming at us all the time. I think it's smart that you're thinking about the exchange of energy. I want this to feel aligned and good. Like, yes, there's all these amazing opportunities, but it doesn't feel aligned for me right now because I, I haven't been able to have the confidence to ask for my worth yet of what I want to be paid to this. So my thought to you would be follow through with your commitments and then listen to what this is teaching you. When you say yes to something, and this is what I want you to start asking yourself before you say yes to something. When you have an opportunity in front of you, because you're always going to have opportunities in front of you, there's never going to be a lack of opportunities. So I first want you to, to realize that there's no scarcity when it comes to the opportunities. And you have just proved this to yourself by the amount of abundance that you now have that like you can't even handle, right? So it's, does this opportunity light me up and make me feel expansive? And like, is it a hell yes? Because if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And that's all you have to know about it. And you can move on. So it's about being honest with yourself on, is this a hell yes? Maybe no, then it's a no. It's either a hell yes, or it's a hell no. And th that's it. And then trusting yourself in that, because that's where you start to really reap the benefits of the power of saying no. So there's a great gift that you're learning and saying yes, because now you're just like, ah, but I, I wouldn't even worry about, is it because I'm on this app or this app or this? Because then you just start focusing on what you don't have. And so you just kind of keep getting more of what you think you need. And really anything that we ever need in life is just because we think it's going to make us feel better. So I want you to start thinking of it in, in those ways. Like it's either a hell yes or a hell no. If it's hell no, it's moving on. I don't have to think about it. And then if it's a heck yes, I'll say heck yes. Then you can start to really step into that and embody that. And that's when you can start to then play with the fun that is asking for what you want and negotiating and, you know, throwing out a number and seeing what they say. But the first step is trusting yourself and not abandoning what you really want and what feels aligned to you. I have reached out to um, a company and I DM them and I got a response that needed to discuss it with their um, team. I reached out again, like probably three weeks later, cause I hadn't heard anything. And they said their team is working on collabs and plans for the year and we'll be in touch soon. And then I haven't heard anything again, and it's been probably three weeks again. I know that what we want is not this. We yeah. want an answer. We want a deal. We okay. want. To, it still could happen. It's just not happening on, on your time, and that's okay. So it's just, it's patience, and it's following up and continuing to follow up and not letting it hinder you from also going after new opportunities because this is about not taking it personal. I think the right answer is being in a flow of consistently following up until you get a no, and then you can learn from your nose and go from there. It took me about three months from the time I made my first pitch to the time I actually got this deal secured. Then it took another six months before it all came together, but I stayed consistent, I stayed open-minded, and I kept asking questions and I kept digging. It didn't happen overnight, but it did happen, and it was worth the wait. I was able to repeat this process for years to come, plan dozens and dozens of paid sponsorships, make my first six figures, quit my job as a publicist, and go all in on my passion. This experience was also the catalyst for the creation of my very first online course, Pitch It Perfect. Pitch It Perfect is designed to teach people how to pitch and make money working with brands, getting sponsored to post on social media, and getting featured in the press. I created Pitch It Perfect to take the guesswork out of pitching. Pitch It Perfect works so well because of my experience working alongside the exact brands and outlets people try to pitch every day. I think the biggest value to this program and why I wanted to share it with the world is my real life expertise. People want to learn from those who have successfully done what they want to do. I am always proud to hear when people call this the best pitch program on the market. No other online course on pitching compares to our students' wins, revenue earned, and success rate. By the time people complete the program, they understand who, what, when, and how to pitch effectively. I also teach how much you can charge and how to negotiate for more money. If you want to start seeing results, this is a step you cannot miss or just fly through. And yes, it helps to have reinforcements.
I'd love to have you in the Pitch It Perfect community as a wildly successful student. But in the meantime, these tools will help you get started so you can begin to pitch, negotiate, and be on your way to seeing amazing changes happen in your life. I know some of you may be thinking, well, <laughs> easy for Julie, she's a publicist. And I get it. Knowing how to use these tools can feel a bit intimidating if you don't feel like you have the background and experience to make it happen. Which is why I must tell you about one of my best friends, pitching guru, author, and life coach, Susie Moore. Susie has no background in publicity or journalism. She was born into a very poor home in England and spent most of her early years living in shelters. Susie has gone on to build a beautiful business and life in America. She's a best-selling author and has been covered by all the top media around the world. When it comes to pitching and landing huge opportunities, Susie says it best. It simply has four zeros. Zero, 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 zero. They represent zero college degree, zero writing background, zero media and PR training or experience, zero connections. Yep, you got that right. All the things you need at zero. That's how I got started, except for the college degree, and the rest I gained in action from being featured in media. It's how you become an expert, gain credibility and authority, and create connections. It's in the doing, not the thinking or planning. You don't need what a lot of people assume you need in order to get featured in the biggest media in the world. Oprah, The Today Show, Cosmopolitan, Good Morning America, The Wall Street Journal, CNN, and tons more. I've been in hundreds of media outlets now. You don't need fancy credentials. You don't need anyone else to approve you. You don't need to be hooked up with the right people. You can do it wherever you are right now with what you have. All you need is an idea worth sharing, a story to tell, or something informative, engaging, or helpful to share. Most people are so much more interesting than they realize. In fact, I've never met a person who wants media coverage who is not media worthy. You're ready. You don't have to have a background in marketing, PR, or anything for that matter to master the skill set and art form that is pitching and negotiating. Sometimes we need to be reminded of what we already know. It's so easy to let things fall by the wayside. Pitching is an activity you will constantly need to hone, practice, and do daily if you intend to master it. I know that over the years, I've only gotten better with practice. This may be the first time you've even considered pitching. This may, in fact, be the first time you've considered monetizing something you truly love to do. You're ready to get what you want, but you just don't know how to take the next steps. I have good news. You're not alone. I am here to help. I have helped thousands like you walk through this process. And I have better news. Your timing couldn't be more perfect. We really are a new generation of leaders because we get to build a following online, whether as individuals or as businesses. This has never happened for any generation before us. Now, I don't have to tell you that this opportunity to have a massive impact and reach with the click of a button is truly a gift. The possibilities are endless for us because now, more than at any time before, we have such a low barrier of entry to reach the masses. 